I just wanted some sauce on those zingers. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. I hope you're having an awesome day. First and foremost, a couple of shameless plugs. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, Review Tech USA. I upload content on a daily basis and I stream usually on a fairly regular basis. So make sure you sub to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. It helps out in the algorithm. Also, too, I have an ASMR channel called Tech. 25 ASMR. I have a bunch of content up there already, and I'm going to have plenty more this year. So sub to Tech 25 ASMR, sub to Review Tech USA. I'll have links to everything I mentioned below in the description and top pin comment. So I have been warning about this ever since we've seen the AI memory price crisis, I guess you could call it, where if you want to get a kit of RAM, it's going up at least, and this is conservative to double the price, if not three times the price. And I, I said to myself, everyone's predicting that the, the AI bubble is going to burst. You know, not that AI is going anywhere as a whole, but this whole insane fever pitch of building, obsessively building data centers, I guess, obsessively is the right word. And it, it's just growing at this scale. Uh, they're not just going to use these AI data centers just for AI. If the bubble, if the bubble bursts, they have other plans for it. They want us to actually have all of our compute power as a service. They, they want us to own nothing and be miserable. Well, Jeff Bezos during a New York times interview, uh, said the quiet part out loud that we already knew. And the thing that I've been warning about for a while now. <laughs> help, us, help us with this. You just said you're very, you're very involved with it right now. What is it that you're doing at Amazon? AI. AI. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a few things, but it's small. But it's nine. I, I find it funny that I don't know anyone personally uh, that is excited for AI. I don't know anyone in this nerd bubble that I am in on the internet that's excited for AI. They keep saying, oh, this is like social media. When everyone who was new and, and everyone was curious about it and unsure what its ramifications were going to be. First off, it, no, social media was different. There were people that were excited for it. It was a new thing. It was a new way to communicate. It was a new way to find women, <laughs> you know, but the thing is that, that Jeff Bezos goes how human beings always kind of catastrophize everything. And it's not as, you know, they, they make things that are new seem worse than they are. Did we really do that with social media, Jeff? It, there's a lot of people that say, if, who are smarter than me, that uh, the reason that we are in the state that we are in in the United States is to is due to social media. How divided we are is due to social media. If anything, if we could ha have um, if we could have a view into the future when social media first got onto the market and what first became mainstream. I think all the fears around it were quite real. So this whole thing of, oh, people are always scared of something new. We should have been, a lot of people were excited, including me, about social media. We saw the upsides and none of the downsides. But if anything, I feel like human beings should have catastrophized that more. So you, you saying, ah, calm down. Human beings, they always get so worried about things. We should have been way more worried about social media. So you may like, oh, calm down with AI. It's not a big deal. That doesn't calm me down. They said the same thing about social media, and it was disaster disastrous, the end result. Let's continue. 95% AI. And where do you so think? It's just so, because they're, we're literally working on a 1,000 applications internally. So AI, you have to remember, AI, modern AI, is a horizontal enabling layer. It, 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 will, it, it can be used to improve everything. It will be in everything. Um, this is most like electricity or I went to a, this is an interesting point that he brings up and I have some statistics to show you that, uh, his electricity, uh, point, like everyone had their own when, when, before electricity went on a grid, everyone had their own generators and everything. And that was so antiquated. And now everyone has just has electricity on the grid and look how much better things are. Are they really that much better? We wouldn't be better off just having our own solar panel panels for our own homes. I mean, I know you need it for lights and stores and other infrastructure. I'm not saying that we should all have our own generators, but anyway, let him, let him finish his analogy about his brewery and uh, then I'll, I'll show you some stats. A um, brewery in Luxembourg many years ago now, in fact, this trip was one of the 
little tiny catalysts for the founding of AWS. The, and the brewery was 300 years old, this company making beer for 300 years. A lot of the oldest companies in the world are breweries, by the way. I don't know why this is. And they were very proud of their history, and they had a museum. And in that museum was an electric power generator, 100 years old. And because when they wanted to improve the efficiency of their brewery with electricity, there was no power grid. So they had to build their own power station. So they made their own electricity. And at that time, that's what everybody did. If a hotel wanted electricity, they had their own electric generator. And I looked at this and I thought, this is what computation is like today. Everybody has their own data center. And that's not going to last. It makes no sense. You're going to buy a compute off the grid. That's AWS. We had we were doing it internally at Amazon for ourselves, and the APIs were created. There's a, that, that's a very interesting story in its own right. But the this is you know these kind of horizontal layers like electricity and compute and now artificial intelligence they they go everywhere. There isn't. I guarantee you, there is not a single application that you can think of that is not going to be made better by AI. And where do you think Amazon is in this? Okay. So his electricity point, okay, on the surface level, oh, it makes sense. Yeah, what are we all going to do? What is every single store going to have their own electricity source? And cool, got you. But here's the thing. We're all on the grid and we are beholden to these electricity companies or power companies to have our electricity. What's happening right now due to, speaking of AI, Jeff, and electricity, per, hey, they, they tie together right now. What's happening to electric bills right now because of AI data centers? Oh, look, I have some stats up on the screen. Uh, AI data centers significantly increase electricity costs by driving huge demand, causing spikes of over 200% in wholesale rates near some sites, leading to nationwide average bill increases of 8% by 2030 with some regions like Virginia seeing 25% hikes. Your electricity bills going up, especially depending on where you're located, is because of the huge demand these AI data centers have on the power grid. My point being is that because you are beholden to these electric companies and corporations to power your homes, power your businesses, what are you going to do if the, the electricity goes up? It's not like you could just pick and pick and choose between different electric companies because it's decided to not be that way. So, all right, either I pay 25% more, that's the extreme case, for my monthly electric bill, or I just start churning my own butter. Yeah, that, that's, that sounds like a great future. Okay, so if I need to edit videos and I can't buy my own local computing power because either it doesn't exist or it's too unaffordable... I just have to pay whatever, say, Amazon has their uh, cloud computing where I could do video editing there. If they want to double the price and there's only one or other two, one or two other options for competitors and they're increasing prices too, what do I do? I have to pay more money. Whereas if I bought local compute power, let's keep it real. Unless you're doing really, really intense stuff, you could keep a computer now for five years and not pay any more for it, which they hate. Whereas if you have to buy a subscription from them and you have to continue to buy it from them, not only are you continually giving them money, which will already be more profitable to begin with, they could change the prices at their will. And at that point, you are beholden. You have no choice if you need to make a living, if you want to play games, if you want to do whatever, to keep paying them money. That's what it's really about. Now, that was a live streamer and cosplayer. I got this one actually from Yang Ye. He posted this, uh, who said the same thing that I have been saying, that this is there is a bigger plan. It's not just this AI bubble and all these data centers are going to go to waste. They want us to all not own a damn thing. And this is what she had to say about it, too. This is what Gen AI is going to bring to you. First, they phase out consumer access to local compute by pricing you out and out force scarcity. I've been saying this. Then you have to pay for all processing power to them for working. Game, video, cloud streaming. They want it to be your only option. Then they will charge you by month, 
by hour and then by minute. Then they will monitor it and censor it as they please, like Sony wants to do with PlayStation. Their terms of service will dictate it all, and without the power of choice, they won't care how much you feel about it. And before you say, oh, this is being alarmist, how many uh, internet companies do you have in your area? Two at most, and maybe a third really crappy option and that probably doesn't even exist. Where are you going to go? Oh, I don't like how much AWS or Amazon is charging me for my uh, cloud compute power to video edit. I'm going to go to a competitor. Oh, wait, there's only one other competitor and they're charging the same price. There's going to be no choice. You're either going to do and pay what they want you to pay, whether it be Amazon, whether it be Google, where you're going to get this cloud computing from. And if you don't like it, you don't have a choice. You either pay or you don't have access to computing. That's what they really want. And if you have no choice, guess what? Just like electricity, they could charge whatever they want. They could get all the profit in the world they want. And they have you as a continual customer for the rest of your life. And that is exactly where they're going with all this. Continuing their terms of service will dictate it all. And without the power of choice, they won't care how you feel about it, which we've seen with cable companies. If you were, or you, we've seen with internet companies, oh, you don't like that you're paying an insane amount for high speed internet. Oh, I guess you're going to have to go to a competitor. Oh, wait, our competitor doesn't exist. Oh, I guess you're going to have to deal with our terrible customer service, Verizon Fios. You're going to have to deal with our terrible customer service and our insanely high priced bills every month. Nothing you could do, huh? Oh no, I guess we screwed you and you have no choice but to let us screw you. She continues here, full control, everything as a service, surveillance and charging you by the minute for it. It all will stem from Gen AI and data centers, the Trojan horse. Don't normalize it. Don't let it in the gates. Unfortunately, though, the average consumer is just going to deal with it because they are sheep. Later on, she talks about the same video that we just watched. I called it. They want to take our local compute away from us and get everyone locked into cloud-owned compute they fully control and monitor. Gen AI is the path for it all. And then she refers to the clip that you and I just watched. So I've had some people say that I am being an alarmist, that I am, you know, fear mongering to a degree. And I say to you now is Jeff Bezos, who is full in on AI and working hard to make sure everything becomes a service, who just admitted that he thinks that local computing is antiquated and everything should be done as a cloud-based service. Is he li li lying? That's what he's going for right now. He's telling you what they are working on right now. So he is the CEO of a company that's working on AI and working on these AI data cloud centers for us to do all of our computing in. Is he making this up? No, he's not. He's not making this up. This should be a five alarm fire. And again, this doesn't just apply to nerds that are building PCs and are playing on their consoles or whatever. This is across the board you're going to have phones that are essentially just going to be dummy term terminals that are beholden to the cloud i mean your phone tracks you plenty already you, that, that's good your phone tracks you all the time already okay let's just keep it real that with your phone just essentially coming a dummy terminal that all of the computing is done in the cloud it's going to be that on steroids Imagine all of your video files. Imagine everything you do on your computer. Someone has their eyes, their prying eyes at a data center that they could see all of that because you have to compute in the cloud. Again, can they see your stuff now on your computer already? Sure. But that again, that will be on steroids. And then on top of it too, where you could just buy a computer for a thousand and have it work for you for years and you just spent that thousand. Now you have to rent computing every month because you can't afford to buy your own computer. And in that same period where you may spend a thousand on a computer and use it for a few years, if not more, you'll have to pay monthly. Say you get some enterprise plan that's a hundred dollars a month where you could have just had a computer do the same thing for you locally for years. What is it? There's 1200 month, 1200 bucks a year, $3,600. Say you had a computer for three years that worked just fine. You spent a thousand. You have to get an enterprise plan to get higher end compute power in the cloud and say it's a hundred a month, 3,600 or a thousand for a computer that would have served you perfectly fine 
for years. That's what they want. They want you to be beholden to them. You will own nothing and you will be miserable. And that's where we're at. And Jeff Bezos just admitted what I've been fearing all along. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.